thank you very much <laughs> to present the live uh, for the first paper in my sections. And uh, if you're ready, yeah. let's start. Thank you very much. Okay, I will start now. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Una, and you can call me Una, a co-author of this paper named semi semi spa encoder neural ranking model using lightweight fine tuning. Uh, I will introduce our motivation first and then introduce the, the related work we reference to develop our idea. And in the methodology, I'll explain our proposed method, semi semi spy encoder. And in the experiment sections, I will show the effectiveness of our methods. Uh, I would like to introduce the story of ranking models for short. For information retrieval, we rank the documents given a query by estimating the relevance between a query and documents. A ranking model does the estimation by computing the score between the query and document. Uh, since the advent of transformers and BERT in 2017 and 18, a large number of BERT-based neural ranking models have been developed. You can see here, a ranking model changed to BERT. And BERT-based, uh, BERT is specialized at computing contextualized representation. BERT-based NRMs have shown the state-of-the-art performances in information retrieval, thanks to this contextualized representation. And we can classify BERT-based uh, BERT NRMs into two types. And the first one is cross-encoder. Cross-encoder models allow self-attention between query and document tokens. Therefore, BERT generates qualified contextualized representation considering the interaction between query and document tokens. However, in the real world, by encoder models like this are more preferable because the, by the by encoder, all the documents can be pre-processed through the BERT before the query comes. With this reason, we mainly focus on improving the performance of by encoder models in our paper. As you can see here, existing by encoder models use CME's BERT encoders for computing both query and document representations. I mean, by CME structure, uh, we use the same BERT ways for uh, pr processing the query and document. However, uh, query and document have distinct characteristics. For example, when we analyze the characteristics of the data sets, which we experimented with, for example, Robust, Cloab, and MS Marco, we can see that a document contains about uh, 1,000 words, and here about 2, 000, more than 2,000 words, while a query has only a few words. In the real search environment, we'll run into the same problem as well. To solve this query and document mismatch problem, we may try to use heterogeneous structure for the query and document like this. However, heterogeneous structure could harm the performance of the model because we think the uh, encoder for a query should find out the pattern out of only a few query words. Therefore, we propose in our work, semi semi spy encoder that can share the meaningful information in query and document and reflect the difference between query and document at the same time. From now, I'll present the wonderful related works which helped us to improve the performance of neural ranking models. Many kinds of neural ranking models have been, have been developed so far. And among them, we implement these three BERT-based NRMs. MonoBERT is a representative cross-encoder model, and MonoBERT is simple in that uh, it introduces a linear aggregator to the CLS representation. Despite its simplicity, MonoBERT is a powerful model because in self-attention, query and documents interaction can be very well processed. TwinBERT introduces a pooling and crossing layer, a crossing, uh, crossing layer to combine the representations of 
theory and document. Although the performance of twin bird is not good enough as mono bird, computation is a lot lower. Colbert is another kind of bi-encoder model, and Colbert considers query and document interaction by using the similarity between query and document representations. Next, I'll explain lightweight fine tuning in uh, for the related works. Lightweight fine tuning is a key method we use for our work. Adapter tuning is one method to lightly fine tune the model. As you can see here, adapter tuning uh, inserts a few new parameters called adapter into the transformer layers and train only these adapter weights while other weights are frozen. Uh, in this uh, picture, we only train these yellow boxes uh, while fr freezing the other all weights. Uh, LURA is a kind of adapter tuning, but it is distinct in two aspects. First, LoRa introduces new parameters to the self-attention projection process. And second, LoRa affects the reference representations by addition. Among adapter-based methods, we adopt LoRa for our semi-CME spy encoder. And prompt-based light uh, prompt-based lightweight fine-tuning inserts artificial embeddings next to the, the original input embeddings. Prompt tuning inserts prompts next to the word embeddings and prefix tuning prepends the prefix factors to each layer's representation. As prompt tuning introduces new parameters equivalent to word embeddings only, the performance is not good enough for information retrieval, at least in our experiments. On the other hand, prefix tuning introduces more parameters and intervenes in each layer's representations. Therefore, uh, the performance was a lot better than prompt tuning. Among them, uh, we mainly adopt prefix tuning for our semi CME spy encoder model. Until now, I have explained the necessity of semi CME spy encoder structure for NRMs and lightweight fine tuning methods. All of the methods we adopt don't change the pre trained birth weights and introduce a few number of new parameters. At this point, uh, and uh, at this point, we want to say that when we adopt different LFT models to BERT models, uh, for theory and document, we can easily and effectively obtain the semi siamese bird based NRMs. From now, I'll explain how we apply these LFT methods, LFT frameworks for semi siamese spy encoder. First, we modified LoRa for semi siamese structure. The original LoRa paper introduced additional LoRa weights like this to self-attention projection of the pre-trained bird. Among query key value of the self-attention projections, uh, LoRa intervenes only in the query and value. Uh, so we construct semi semi structure by inserting query-specific and document-specific LoRa weights for making value vectors. In other words, LoRa query weights are commonly used in both encoders while LoRa value weights are independently trained for each encoder in our semi is LoRa. And next, we constructed semi siamese structure using prefix tuning. In this picture, you can see multiple prefix factors are prepended to each layer's representations. Uh, CMEs by encoder models use the same prefixes for both query and document. On the other hand, for our semi siamese prefix tuning, we generate semi semi prefixes by summing up common prefixes with query-specific or document-specific prefixes. While the common prefix learns the shared information from query and document, specific prefixes focus on specific patterns. Uh, because prefix tuning and LoRa are involved in different parts of transformers, we decided to apply apply prefix tuning and LoRa in a hybrid manner. To prevent two types of weights from conflicting each other, we sequentially uh, train LFT weights while the other weights are frozen. 
here the algorithm one shows the sequential hybrid L of the algorithm for the case where the prefixed weights are firstly uh, trained and then the LoRa weights are trained. And from now, I'll present the experimental results and show how effective our semi siamese LFT methods are. We use three data sets, Robust, CLUEP, and MS Marco. Compared to MS Marco, uh, Robust and CLUEP have shorter and more keyword-like queries. For example, query examples of Robust and CLUEP are composed of only a few words, and MS Marco's queries are longer and more like full sentences. For evaluation metrics, we use three metrics, Precision 20 and NDCG 5 and 20. Uh, from here, I'll present the results. And before jumping into the results of buy encoders, I'll show the advantage of using LFT methods for the cross encoder model. Here you can see uh, LFT improves the performance of full fine tuning on all three data sets. We find out that LURA tends to improve the performance of monovert a lot compared to prompt-based prompt methods. Here you can see the improvements compared to the full fine tuning. And here we compare full fine tuning with Siamese LFT methods when applied on bi encoder models. You see that lightweight fine tuning of bi encoders is better than full fine tuning in most cases. The results also show uh, for the, the data sets having keyword based queries like robust and CLUA, uh, prefix tuning significantly outperforms full fine tuning and other LFT methods. And finally, we show the results of semi Siamese LFT methods applied on the bi encoder neural ranking models. Semi Siamese LFT further improves Siamese LFTs. Uh, achieving the state-of-the-art performance, especially for datasets having keyword-based queries. Hybrid semi siamese LFT also shows the possibility to improve the performance of LFT. Until now, I have introduced our semi siamese by encoder neural ranking models using lightweight fine-tuning like LoRa and prefix tuning. These pictures illustrate our methods. And if you want, you can implement our methods using the GitHub repository here. This is the end of my presentation and thank you for listening. If there is any question, ask me, please. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the you know, very nice uh, talk uh, during the morning. Um, so any question from the floor? Any questions? Uh, thanks for your presentation. And I have a question. Um, it is intuitively that the, uh, your model can uh, can, can reduce the size of training parameters. But I wonder, uh, why is the uh, 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 why is your model can improve the efficiency and both reduce the uh, size of training parameters? If you fix the uh, parameters in BERT, then uh, how can the fine tune process the um, improve the efficiency? And uh, if the efficiency can also be improved in a larger data set instead of a small data set, since if it is a large data set, then the fully fine tuning is more needed. Thank you. Uh, I'm a little confused. That, uh, is it uh, right to Una, you, write? You, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can start to uh, just answer the first question. So I think the question is a bit long. <laughs> and <laughs> then, uh, then the, 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 the guy can ask uh, the question part uh, you forgot Una so please uh, just yeah yeah yes. the question was very long and can you clarify the first question oh sorry yeah. maybe my question is so long and uh, the, the first question is that that it is intuitively that your model can reduce the size of training parameters but uh, 
I wonder why can your model can also improve the efficiency of the bottom of the bottom model is uh, adding the raw rate and better than the fully fine tuned model. Um, um, should I help? Uh, is it right <laughs> that you are asking that uh, um, reducing the memory is okay, understandable? But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the efficiency the, the, the uh, aspect of inferencing the model, there would be no plus. Is that right? Uh, yes, I, I think the efficiency is not very understandable. Yeah. The, uh, actually, in uh, oh, Laura, may, maybe I can help. Uh, we, I'm a co -order. Yes, part three, please go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm a coder. I'm a Monjong. I'm on John, and uh, let me quickly answer the question. So, in, at the first time, there's no advantage in terms of uh, calculation, the computational computational requirement. The advantage is really uh, using the by encoder itself. So you're right. There's no uh, improvement for inference time. Mm -hmm. our, our main claim is that the performance can be uh, improved with uh, for the by encoder using this uh, solution. And, mm -hmm. and other than that, I mean, the computational improvement is, uh, is not there. Does that answer your question? Uh, uh, I don't understand. The um, uh, my question is why the model can perform better than the fully fine tuned model, and I can't understand the last sentence you say. Uh, okay, for, for that, uh, it per, uh, it's just uh, for the fine tuning, uh, sham, or because of the difference between query and uh, document, we would like to have some uh, different encoders for the query and document. But then if yeah. you really fine tune uh, encoder for query and encoder for a document separately, actually the performance mm -hmm. becomes much worse. And the reason we believe is because, you know, this uh, BERT encoder is supposed to have kind of a common structure, common way of uh, creating the contextual embedding. And then if you make two of them to be too different, then the scoring part cannot work well. So we would like to have the two uh, BERT encoders, one for query and one for document, somewhat related but then we want to have slight difference such that we can handle these uh, short queries better. So we're basically controlling how much uh, fine tuning is allowed for each uh, encoder. And then it turns out that by controlling that we can, we can improve the performance. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for Actually, I think we are running out of time. So probably we can meet in the poster uh, session and then talk more. Yeah, 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 thank, thank you. you very much.